When it comes to phone metadata, the government and computer scientists have largely been on opposite sides of the privacy debate. No doubt, uh, uh, defense of the NSA's program was it's just metadata. Um, and so uh, it seemed to us it would be worth the time to try to see whether that claim was true empirically. Metadata includes details like the number dialed, the time of the call, and duration. Just how sensitive is that information? According to research done by Stanford PhD student Jonathan Mayer and his partner, very. They created an Android app, Metaphone, that asked users to volunteer their phone records in an effort to learn what can be uncovered from metadata. More than 500 people signed up. We began by identifying the organizations associated with the phone numbers in our data set. And we did that primarily using phone books provided by Yelp and by Google. Totally public, totally easy to access. With the help of Facebook's phone directory feature, People Search Services, and Google, more than 90% of the numbers were quickly identified. We uh, noted when a business was uh, a firearms dealer. We noted when a, uh, a business was a health service provider. Users also place calls to religious organizations, financial services, and marijuana dispensaries. Although NSA surveillance is limited to two or three degrees of separation from an original suspect, the Metaphone app illustrates how the program can reach many people. There are these uh, numbers that are very, very popular, like uh, T-Mobile's voicemail number, or FedEx, or Delta Airlines, uh, or uh, one of my favorites, uh, telemarketers, these, these spam phone calls, um, which call loads and loads of people. Um, and uh, the NSA's rules don't uh, prohibit the agency from following those hops. Mayer and his partner plan to examine the data further to see if other information can be found. They'll focus on text messages next, and they're working on something called a dating detector. Right, th this is like w what computer science people do on a weekend, I guess. We don't go on dates, we just build systems for detecting people going on dates. Uh, and so uh, we built a machine learning system for identifying participants who were or weren't in a romantic relationship. It all raises very real privacy concerns about what happens when our phone records and public information reveal very personal affairs. In Stanford, California, I'm Sumi Das, CNET.com for CBS News.